This video is brought to you by Fantasy Island. Own it on digital now, on Blu-ray and DVD, May 12th. If Fantasy Island can get a horror makeover, why not these classic shows too? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV shows that should be remade as a horror franchise. For this list, we're imagining how older TV series could work as horror film franchises, regardless of their original genre. Which of these would you like to see the most? To celebrate the release of Fantasy Island, we'll be taking some of our favorites and creating some bizarro trailers. Stay tuned for that! Number 10. Inspector Gadget Dr. Claw's voice is already the stuff of nightmares, and the fact that we never see his face only adds to the creep factor. Right, Mad Cat? <laughs> so, giving this cartoon a gritty horror reboot honestly wouldn't be that huge of a stretch. Imagine it. After mad terrorists leave his body mutilated, a clueless inspector is turned into a vengeful cyborg. Slowly but surely, Inspector Gadget loses himself to his mechanical body, taking out anyone who stands in the way of his revenge spree. Aha! Uh -huh. So there are mad agents here after all! Director Lee Winnell of Upgrade would be a natural fit for a sci-fi body horror picture like this. We could also see Elizabeth Moss playing a grown-up Penny who tries to stop Uncle Gadget with help from her dog Brain. I'm going too, Uncle Gadget. No, Penny, I don't think that will be necessary. Number 9. Gilligan's Island Although it's best remembered for its campy, lighthearted tone, the premise for Gilligan's Island has horror picture written all over it. Gilligan! Oh my gosh, man overboard. The film could return to the series' black and white roots, borrowing a few visual cues from the lighthouse. Just like in that film, the characters grow increasingly frustrated with one another when they're stranded on a remote island. The bumbling Gilligan proves especially hard to coexist with, eventually driving the skipper to bash his skull in with a coconut. Wait a minute, you call that finished? Not the raft, the sign. <laughs> the next morning, however, Gilligan's body isn't where they buried it. One by one, Gilligan hunts down his fellow castaways. Suddenly, Gilligan's signature bucket hat takes on a more menacing appearance. Not unlike the Fisherman's Ensemble in I Know What You Did Last Summer. Number 8. Herman's Head This obscure 90s sitcom centered on an average Joe named Herman and the personified emotions that occupy his psyche. But this struggle is going on inside all of us. And it's all going on inside Herman's Head. Herman is more or less a decent guy, but what if he were violent, prone to sudden outbursts, and all-around psychotic? What if the four emotions that took up his mind consisted of anger, paranoia, envy, and bloodlust with remorse nowhere to be found? What if he had multiple personalities, all fighting to take control of the unstable Herman? I'm standing here! I'm standing here! Hot the brains in this freaking brain! Who are you calling a mook? <laughs> you can lock him up in a loony bin, but Herman's head is already an untamable madhouse. There's unlimited potential here for a psychological thriller that delves into insanity like never before. Think Norman Bates or Patrick Bateman, but with an inside-out twist. Just don't touch any other memories until we figure out what's going on. Number 7. The Secret World of Alex Mack This Nickelodeon series follows a young girl who develops supernatural powers after getting soaked by a truckload of chemicals. <laughs> The side effects of GC-161 include telekinesis, liquefying, and electricity. The show blended a variety of genres, from teen drama to sci-fi, but the premise could function as a work of horror, too. This material seems well-suited for body horror master David Cronenberg. Like Christopher Walken in The Dead Zone, Alex could be a tragic hero whose powers sometimes feel more like a curse. She could also be reimagined as a villain who makes heads explode a la Scanners. If Cronenberg wants to take an especially depressing route like The Fly, the film could center on Alex gradually deteriorating into a puddle while her humanity melts away. Oh, get out of here! Number 6. Pee-wee's Playhouse Remember Large Marge from Pee-wee's Big Adventure? Well, imagine the creep factor from that scene if it were injected into the off-the-wall madness of Pee-wee's Playhouse. It looked like... This. <laughs> While this children's show was always upbeat and energetic, it easily could have taken on a very different tone. 
A lot of the surreal characters who occupy the titular playhouse would feel right at home in a bad fever dream that Freddy Krueger cooked up. Hey, magic screen! What's that red thing over there? What's a silly question, Pee-wee? It's the door! Ah! Even Pee-wee himself walks a fine line between being charming and being creepy. That being said, what if Pee-wee were reinvented as a villain like Pennywise, luring children to his playhouse for a playdate with death? Plus, we don't know about you, but we find something very unsettling about Lawrence Fishburne's cowboy character. Well, where is he? Oh, I give up. Come out, come out, Pee-wee, wherever you are, I give up! Number 5. Animorphs Based on the young adult novels, the Animorphs TV series was short-lived, but certainly left an impression. While the show put an emphasis on sci-fi and suspense, this setup could also provide leeway for some horrifying scenarios. What is that? Find out? No, thanks. The premise revolves around five teenagers who are able to morph into any animal they come into physical contact with. Sounds cool on paper, but if an American werewolf in London taught us anything, it's that transforming into a savage beast can be downright terrifying if executed properly. heroes do battle with alien parasites, which is reminiscent of Invasion of the Body Snatchers and The Thing. As for the cast, the kids from New Mutants should be available since that's probably not getting a sequel. You know, I could hear my bones crunching and twisting. Oh, man. Now I watch my arms become paws. Number 4. Eerie Indiana We guess you could say that Eerie Indiana was the 90s kid show equivalent to Twin Peaks. Both were ahead of their time, and both took place in quirky small towns where strange occurrences are part of everyday life. Don't believe it. I don't care. I'm telling you, this guy entered my dream last night. It's like he got into my mind, Simon. While mainly aimed at children, the show got away with its fair share of dark imagery, which might explain why it only lasted a season. <laughs> then something happened that never happened to me in any dream I've ever had before. Eerie Indiana developed a passionate fan base, however with one of its most notable admirers being Gravity Falls creator Alex Hirsch. With the popularity of Stranger Things and Stephen King's It, we think now is as good a time as any for an even more adult eerie Indiana reboot on the big screen. Director Joe Dante could even come back as a creative consultant. Today's November 10th. Time to go for it. Number 3. Leave it to Beaver If you were to fall on the compound, Captain Jack would not bite your arm off. He would saw it off. <laughs> From the bad seed to the exorcist to hereditary, cinema has granted us no shortage of sinister children. Giving Theodore Beaver Cleaver the Damien treatment may sound borderline comedic. Wally, we could keep in the bathtub. You have to admit, though, we need to talk about the Beaver does have a nice ring to it. The horror version of this Golden Age sitcom could either turn Beaver into the Antichrist or a seemingly ordinary boy deprived of empathy for the atrocities he commits. What do alligators eat? Besides arms and legs. Either way, he's raising a whole new level of mischief. Of course, Beaver wouldn't necessarily need to be the villain. Maybe he could fill the Danny Torrance role while his father Ward hunts his family down with an axe. Or would a cleaver be more fitting in this case? You know, the little fellow didn't actually bite me, he kind of sawed at me. <laughs> Number 2. The Adams Family they're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky, they're altogether ooky, but the Adams Family was never exactly intended to be straight up scary. <laughs> Why, you hurt up my African strangler. As macabre as they might be, we wouldn't label any of their incarnations under the horror genre. If a hard R Adams Family reboot were given the green light, though, just think of the gothic possibilities. Wednesday wouldn't need telekinetic powers to go carry on her school. Gomez and Morticia could channel Sweeney Todd and Mrs. Lovett, inviting other families over for dinner and turning them into meat pies. Ah, Mr. Hilliard, murder is not a little thing. And naturally, Cousin It needs to be played by Bill Skarsgård. They could even have a crossover with the Munsters. Now there's a dark universe that we would totally be on board for. If there's anything that disturbs me, Lily, it's the idea of grown people like us dressing up in costume and looking ridiculous. <laughs> you know, 
I wouldn't be at all shocked if we started to see a lot more lighthearted TV shows being made into horror movies in the future. They could even just make like a TGIF horror anthology movie. But our number one seems like a slam dunk because it was already kind of spooky. So let's look through the honorable mentions and then we'll see what we're working with. Naturally, don't apologize. You've got your job and I've got mine, eh, soldier? Give it to me. I intend to. continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Between a true crime spoof on Family Guy and a Friday the 13th crossover on Robot Chicken, we've been given a taste of what a Scooby-Doo horror movie might be like. We should make like hockey sticks and get the puck out of here! <laughs> the Scooby gang even appeared on Supernatural, where the mystery got all too real. Outside of parodies and homages, though, this Saturday morning staple has never officially been adapted into a legitimate horror picture. Several artists would be tailor-made for such a project, from Joss Whedon to Drew Goddard to Sam Raimi. <laughs> Even James Gunn, who wrote the live-action Scooby-Doo movies, could turn in an effective horror film if given free reign. Considering that Scooby's met everybody from John Cena to the Harlem Globetrotters, it only makes sense for him to cross paths with Cujo. This video is brought to you by Fantasy Island. Own it on digital now, on Blu-ray and DVD, May 12th.